Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to make Space Invaders in under 10 minutes with Bevy and Rust. To follow this tutorial, you will need to have Rust as well as the dependencies for using the Bevy game engine installed. I've linked Bevy's setup page in the description which does quite a good job on showing how to get everything set up. Also, in case any of you are struggling with the code, I will also be linking the source code for this project in the description. Alright, without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to have you all do is create an assets folder. Within this folder, we will be storing resource files such as PNG textures. You guys can either create your own assets or copy my assets folder from the GitHub project linked in the description. I would recommend using my assets until you successfully get to the end of the video, at which point you can modify the project safely to suit your own needs. Okay, let's first create a new Bevy app and just test to see if we can open a window. Now, let's modify the window size to be 512 by 512 pixels because the default window size doesn't really suit a game like Space Invaders. I'll also be changing the sampler settings to nearest sampling to prevent our pixel art from becoming blurry with the standard bilinear settings. Great, now create a new file called game.rs. This is where we will be structuring our game loop. Now let's create a plugin for our game loop. Bevy plugins allow us to organize the logic in our game into separate plugin features. We can specify what systems to run every frame or what resources to add into the game with these plugins. The game plugin which we are creating right now will be in charge of organizing and including other plugins. Alright, let's add the game plugin back into our main file so that we can actually use it. Next, let's create an alien plugin which will be in charge of moving our aliens around and managing their behaviors. Now let's create a setup function for our aliens that will spawn our alien entities. Let's just spawn a single alien for now just to see if our system is working. So the alien seems very small, and that's because the ratio between our actual pixel art and the screen are 1 to 1. I want to universally store a ratio that we can scale all our sprites by to make them more visible. Additionally, I also want a way to place our alien at the very top of our window, which we are going to need the dimensions of our window for. So let's create another plugin and a resource to manage all of these variables. Now is a good time to introduce resources in Bevy. These are basically a way of retaining global data which can be accessed from any system. So we will be making a resolution resource which stores the resolution of the window as well as the pixel ratio which the sprites will be drawn at. In this new plugin, we only need a single system which runs at startup and initializes some properties which we will make use of throughout this video. Now all we have to do is access this resource in our update aliens function and our alien should be normally sized now. Now let's spawn more than one alien. I'm going to be creating some constants which specify the dimensions of our flock of aliens as well as the spacing, and then spawn them using this nested for loop. Okay, so the aliens are all in the first quadrant, but we want them to be aligned with the top of the screen and center, so let's tweak the positioning a bit. Perfect, our aliens are now in the right spot. Bevy uses an ECS or Entity Component System to control the logic in your game. Components are basically just data added to an entity which can be used to access entities and update them accordingly. Currently, the aliens are just sitting there, so let's add a component which marks our entity as an alien. Then we will create a system which runs every frame, queries for the entities that contain an alien component, and updates their positions. In Space Invaders, the aliens all move in the same direction, so let's create a resource that controls the movements of the aliens called Alien Manager. Within the loop, we will move the aliens in the direction specified by Alien Manager. Okay, but the aliens are just moving off screen right now, which is not what we want. So let's add some restrictions. When the aliens move off screen, we will reverse the direction in Alien Manager and restrict all the aliens to be inbounds by calculating the change in X position that will get them back on screen. Also, we will activate a boolean in Alien Manager that will shift the aliens downwards. Of course, we need to create another system which will handle all this logic. Alright, I'll admit I sped up that part quite a bit, so if you are having trouble, check out the source code in the description or just ask me for help. With the aliens complete, it's time to get to work on our player plugin. For now, this is going to be very simple. I'll make a setup and update system just like the alien plugin, and in the update function, we will check if keys are being pressed and move our player accordingly. Additionally, we don't want our player to end up off screen, so of course, we will be checking for the right bound and left bound of our screen and confining the player within that range. 
This part should be a lot easier to follow, so I'll take some time to explain some other things which beginners might be confused about. When loading an asset, the root directory is default set to the folder named Assets, so we don't need to include that in our path when loading textures. Additionally, you might notice that I'm accessing the command struct quite a bit. This is because commands is responsible for many entity operations such as creating and despawning entities, as well as adding and removing components from them. Also, in case you don't understand queries in Bevy, these just find all the entities which contain the components that you list in the tuple, and you can access a mutable or immutable reference to these components when querying for them. Also, there is a without and with parameter which you can include in the query, which just tells Bevy to find entities with or without these components. It doesn't give a reference to those components though, so it's helpful when you don't need to modify or access the components of these entities. Okay, now we have a player that can move around, but it doesn't shoot yet. So let's implement a projectile plugin. The projectile plugin will contain two functions, one to update the projectiles, and another to determine if we actually hit an alien. For now, we only need to worry about the first one. You might start to notice a pattern at this point with how we are creating systems and plugins for our game. I don't know if this is actually the best way to go about developing a game, but it's a very simplified pattern of how I usually go about creating an ECS based game in Bevy. Alright, back to our update projectiles function. Each frame, we just move the projectiles upward and use the entity ID to despawn them once they get off screen. Additionally, inside of our player system, we will make a shoot timer that keeps ticking down. Once it hits zero, we will be allowed to shoot, at which point a projectile will be spawned at our player position. The timer will be reset and start counting down again. I'd just like to add that loading the asset every time you spawn the asset is pretty bad practice, but I'm fine with it because the tutorial is only meant to teach you the general architecture in a bevy game, but not the most sophisticated and proper architecture. And with that, we are able to shoot, but the bullets don't actually do anything yet. So let's start making a way for the aliens to die and respawn in case the player is to lose the game. I'm going to create a marker component for any dead aliens that get shot. Also, let's add a dead boolean and an original position vector in our alien component. When the alien dead boolean is triggered, we will make the alien invisible and insert a dead component into the entity. And also, since we added a without dead component in our alien query, these aliens won't be updated by the system anymore. If the aliens reach the bottom of the screen, that means we've lost and we should trigger the reset boolean. If the reset boolean in alien manager is triggered by the aliens getting to the bottom of the screen, we will restore any dead aliens and make it so that they are reset to their original positions. Additionally, Alien Manager is resynced to the original direction that the aliens were moving at as well. Now we just need to go back into our projectile file and make the system responsible for triggering alien deaths. If the distance is less than a specified amount, we will despawn the projectile and add the alien to our dead aliens pool. Also, as you can see in the comment that I wrote above the despawn line, it is generally not a good idea to despawn the projectile while also querying for projectiles as this can cause us to despawn a non-existent entity that we've already despawned. In this case though, the warning which Bevy gives us doesn't actually do anything harmful for our game so I'm just going to keep the code as is. Alright, you've just been taught to create space invaders in the Bevy game engine in under 10 minutes. If you made it to the end of this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos.